Hello and welcome back. Gia Dave of August Fulcher Rash Gaji and Hazel Jean Taro. Um, today we are going to be having a chat about Bridget. Um, working with Bridget and some. I'm just going to show you some of the books and other things that I have or use to work with the goddess Bridget. So um, this is not a video where I'm going to be trying to explain all the lore around um, Bridget or um, that sort of thing. I'm um, maybe saving that for <laughs> could save that for another time. Um, and I, although I'm still reading and learning myself. Uh, but today I just wanted to show you some of the things that I have um, and have used and have read working with Bridget. So um, the first thing, um, most obvious thing, I guess, um, is the Bridget's Cross. Now, this is a little tiny one <laughs> that I made uh, just there at, on the 1st of February this year. And I did make a separate video about how to make a Bridget's Cross. So um, a St. Bridget's Cross is something I learned how to make in school. Um, growing up in Ireland, going to Catholic school, um, we would have made these in school and been shown how to make them in school. Um, and the mythology around the Bridget's Cross is that St. Bridget picked up some rushes um, and made a cross to explain about the crucifixion of Jesus to like an Irish chieftain or something and um, converted him to Christianity. So that's sort of the story that I learned as a child. But um, in terms of that crossover into the pagan, um, more pagan relationship with Bridget, um, the goddess, there are there's a three-legged version of this cross um, that can be used maybe thinking of the triple goddess aspect of Bridget um, or the four-legged cross could be used to think of things like the four cardinal directions, um, the elements, that sort of thing, um, rather than the Christian cross specifically. Um, but like a lot of people who work with Bridget in Ireland, I sort of have a little bit of a foot in each camp in terms of how I think of Bridget and can't fully separate Bridget the goddess and Bridget the saint into two separate people um, in my head. I know that's not how other people necessarily view Bridget and there'll definitely be people out there who work only with the sort of pagan aspect of Bridget and don't like the, you know, using the Catholic saint as well. But the Catholic saint's mythology um, and stories are so fascinating and inspiring. And I, of course, knew her first before I knew of the goddess. And uh, so for me, um, they both kind of, they're, in, they're hand in hand for me. Um, so anyway, this is the, the cross. So one of the things I do is on the 1st of February each year, or close to that date, I gather rushes and I'll make three and four legged crosses. Um, I put them over the threshold of the house if I can. So Bridget was, um, St. Bridget was supposed to have been born on the threshold of the house. Improbable, though that might be, if you imagine, childbirth um, with one foot in and one foot out of the household. Um, but her mother was supposed to have given birth to her on the threshold and that Bridget then is... Um, kind of over the, the idea of the threshold and blessing the threshold of the home. So that's the Bridget's Cross. Um, another thing that I use um, working with Bridget is a brat bridge. Now, this is not really a traditional brat bridge. I think I did read somewhere that it was supposed to be a red cloth or even just a ribbon, um, like a piece of ribbon. This is a muslin, like a baby, a muslin you would have for, have for a baby to mop up their little spills and so on. Um, but it's just what I had in the house. Um, so I decided to use that. A couple of years ago and so this is sort of its second year in use as a brat breed. So the idea is that Bridget passes through the land on the eve of the 1st of February. So on the 31st of January you leave your brat breed outside so I just peg it on the washing line and sort of set the intention that this is going to be blessed by Bridget and then when you bring it into your home you then keep it as something for healing um, through the year so that it could be maybe used to wrap around throats if you've got a sore throat or a cold or or something like that and while I would not ever suggest that you use your brat bridge instead of you know going to the doctor 
um, I have found it a comfort to have and um, to to hold or wrap around myself or cover myself with when I have been unwell. So um, that is that. But that's the idea of a brat bridge. And I think over time, a lot of people would, you know, cut off pieces of their brat bridge um, to give to people who weren't well and that they can get smaller and smaller over time and so on. So who knows what this will look like in 10 or 15 years if I'm still using the same piece of cloth or if I might um get myself a red ribbon or something to be more traditional about it um in the future but that's what i have at the minute um for my bridget's cloth or my brat bridge okay so um so where do we learn all of these kind of traditions and ideas well part of it is growing up in ireland and you know growing up in the catholic church like the brat bridge i heard of from one of my aunts who used to do that uh but all, a lot of these traditions are also written up in various books. So if you don't have access to, you know, an aunt to fill in on these things uh, and, and traditions change and different, like even across Ireland, people probably follow different traditions in different families and different regions and so on. So there's, I would say there's no one like right way to do things. These are just some of the traditions that I'm aware of. Um, and some of them have been shared in some of these books I'm going to share with you today as well. So I'll start off with this is my probably my favourite um, Bridget related book. Um, so this is the Pagan Portals book about Bridget um, by Morgan Dalmler. And this is the subtitle is Meeting the Celtic Goddess of Poetry, Forge and the Healing Well. I love the cover illustration of the woman or Bridget working in the forge. It's a short book, as you can see, as the Pagan Portals books tend to be. So it's pretty accessible. One of the things I like about Morgan Dalmer as a writer is that her books are very well researched and um, lots of kind of footnotes and annotations and so on. She's also very comfortable with ambiguity and she doesn't attempt to make assertions about the nature of Bridget in a definitive way. When she's looking at the mythology of the goddess Bridget, um, you're looking at various like um, myths and 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 so on that have contradictory content between one and the other. For example, there is um, no clarity about who Bridget's mother was, while the goddess Bridget is thought to be the son, the daughter of the Dagda. Um, the mother of Bridget um, is said to be the Morrigan, um, but also said to be Bowen. So, you know, individual people who work with Bridget might feel like which one of those myths resonates with her the with them the most um but morgan dalmer doesn't attempt to be definitive about lots of those kind of ambiguous things she presents the ambiguity um as it exists in the lore so i find this book really very good so you can see um just from the content some of the topics that she talks about bridget in the mythology symbols um associated with bridget animals and holidays um, how the goddess is worked with in modern times and then there's some prayers and so on included as well so this is a lovely book and I will probably read this again quite soon I have I haven't read it in a while um, but it does acknowledge that Bridget is not just a goddess of Ireland that she also is um, is known in other parts of you know Wales and England and Scotland and into um, the rest of Europe there's different versions of breed um, Brigantia, different names associated with similar goddesses. So she explores a lot of that and that's really, this is like my top recommended book, I think. Another book about Bridget that I have read is This Tending Bridges, Bridget's Flame by Linnea Weatherstone. I think this is maybe the first book about Bridget that I read. Um, <clears throat> I would say that this is more of a personal journey with Bridget rather than um, whereas Morgan Dalmer's book is more of a like a researched presentation of the lore and the evidence that there is around the goddess of Bridget. Um, Tending Bridget's Flame is more of like a personal journey with Bridget of this particular writer and <clears throat> how she understands and works with Bridget. So as a result, some of this would be um, not like... It's not as referenced um, as the other book, for example. Um, I have been involved in a few sort of online discussions around Bridget and one of the, the phrases that kept coming up was UPG, unverified personal gnosis. Um, and 
how that like isn't the same as the the lore as as it exists in some of the the texts like the the myths and and so on that have been have been handed down like from the in written form and this book has been criticized as being more um personal gnosis than than lore i've seen that criticism on, but i quite enjoyed reading it myself um so she talks about um Bridget the goddess and the idea then of into the saint saint Bridget and the connections between those and then she think talks about um like working with Bridget so Bridget in the home Bridget in the garden Bridget at the hearth you know so there's different um ways of working with Bridget um and this idea of keeping a, fl a, f a flame burning for Bridget and uh sort of you know there's a lot there's a lot of stuff here about Bridget as a creator as a the Bridget of the Forge and so on so I find this an interesting book I wouldn't want to put anybody off reading it I enjoyed it and I think when you're if you're working with a particular um saint or goddess that you know everybody will have ways in which that um manifests for them I'm not going to share too much of my own personal journey with Bridget today Maybe I will another time, but uh, I wouldn't want anyone else telling me that my experience of Bridget isn't valid, and um, that because that you know that's my experience, and but I wouldn't want to try to insist that everyone else should experience Bridget in the same way as me, if that makes sense. So I think there's space for people's individual interpretations of the goddess, and a book like this maybe takes the the lore. Um, and then pulls it more into a modern setting of like how uh, an individual can work with Bridget um, in their daily life, that kind of thing. So um, it's a longer book and um, it's maybe one you could dip in and out of as well as one to just read. So that's Tending Bridget's Flame by Linnea Weatherstone. And another book on Bridget that I'm actually not completely finished yet is this book Bridget by Courtney Weber. History, Mystery and Magic of the Celtic Goddess. I am um, finding this a little bit of a slow read. It's not maybe, uh, it's not engaging me as much as maybe those other two books did. But the <clears throat> the structure of this book is interesting. So she talks about um, Bridget the Healer. So this again focused mainly on the goddess Bridget. So Bridget the Healer, Bridget the Bard. And Bridget of the Forge and the Anvil. So those sort of the three main aspects of the Celtic goddess Bridget. Um, but then she also talks about the goddess of the oak, the sacrificial Bridget, which that chapter, it didn't really resonate with me. It's not my understanding of Bridget so much. But it was uh, it was interesting enough to read, but it wasn't um it didn't resonate with me as much. But then she has a chapter then on the battle goddess, Bridget the Warrior, which was interesting and actually well, initially I saw that title and went, no, Bridget is the goddess of poetry and the forge and healing and not a battle goddess. But when I, as I started to think about it and my own personal experiences of Bridget, I felt like that energy um, actually fit fairly well for me. Um, I know a lot of people consider Bridget to be like a very soft, gentle, light goddess, but um, I've always found her to have more edge than that. <laughs> um, and... Uh, this is a, so that was interesting chapter and then there's a chapter about Imolk, Bridget in the springtime um which is kind of where I'm at at the minute and then um Bridget and animals and and working um magically with Bridget I think it's the last chapter we haven't finished those last couple of chapters yet so yeah this is a good enough book um I am glad I'm reading it but uh yes it's maybe not quite as engaging a read um as some of those other books and then finally i have this little book it's tiny um which i picked up in in a catholic shop somewhere and this is a little book about bridget of ireland by this writer john j reardon who looks like is a is a catholic priest i would imagine um so bridget the saint and the goddess so it's a very short little book um but it covers um, a bit about the life of Saint Bridget. Um, and uh, it's got some kind of cute little... It, there's lots of these little devotional booklets published um, and available in Catholic churches at the backs of churches and in, in shops. So it gives um, 
there's a section from Cogitosis um, on the life of Saint Bridget. And then there's um, some stuff on Bridget in the 20th century or 21st century, sorry. And then um, some analysis of claims around Bridget. Of course, this book being a little Catholic booklet isn't really embracing the idea of Bridget the goddess, um, especially. Um, but it just shows you some of the places um, that are sacred to Bridget in Ireland. So um, this is maybe a good opportunity to mention some of the places that I have visited that are sacred to Bridget. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure I'm going to be easily able to edit the photographs into this video because they are not stored on my phone at the moment. But um, the I did a number of summers ago, way pre-pandemic, um, visit Kildare where um, where St. Bridget had her monastery, her um, monastic settlement, but also uh, where the eternal flame to the goddess Bridget had been burned um, prior to um, the prior to the arrival of Christianity into Ireland. So the the story is that the eternal flame was kept burning for Bridget and then the that the Saint Bridget revived the practice of keeping an eternal flame burning. Um, and then that ended around the times of the Reformation, I believe. And then the the nuns of Solus Bridge, which is in Kildare, kind of a retreat centre, which is run by Bridgetine nuns in Kildare. And they restarted the tradition of having an eternal flame burning. So I visited the town of Kildare, went to the cathedral in Kildare, where um, which is a Church of Ireland cathedral, not a Catholic cathedral. Um, to see the the church and then in the grounds of the church there is like a a wall like a ruin that is supposed to have been where the eternal flame the sort of pagan fire temple had been on that site so we visited that we also went to St Bridget's Well which is a bit outside of the town of Kildare um, it's a nice well they have a, like a statue of Bridget there and there's lots of little ribbons and and prayers and stuff tied to the trees around the well. So we went there and then we finally visited Solace Bridge. Um, I had contacted the nuns in advance. And as I say, this was pre-pandemic, so I don't know what would happen nowadays. But um, I had emailed the nuns in advance and expressed an interest of coming and praying there. Um, and they, when I arrived, were very gracious, brought me into the room where they have the eternal flame burning and um, put on some uh, devotional music and sat with me for a little while um, in silence and then they left and I was left for as long as I needed to sit with the candle with the eternal flame and there was um, a beautiful statue um, in the garden behind um, where I was sitting and there was beautiful art prints of Bridget on the walls and um, I was able to get a couple of things before I left which of course uh, I don't have immediately to hand right now to show you um, but um, I got a few little art postcards and stuff. I wish I'd got a CD of the devotional music because it was really beautiful. And I don't know who the artists were. And I have never been able to find it on YouTube or anything. Um, but uh, so that was a lovely place. And um, I had very, uh, it felt like a very close pl place where it was very close to um, to Bridget. So so that was sort of a pilgrimage I did myself just um, to see some of the sites in Ireland that are sacred to Bridget. Um there is also um, Foggart, where she was born, um, which I haven't been to yet, um, so I'll have to go there um, to visit that. And there's a, a beautiful mural, apparently, in Foggart, um, which I've seen pictures of online, and I would love to see it. Um, and you can also go to in Downpatrick, where St. Bridget is supposed to be buried, and I haven't been there yet, so I would like to go there too. This video is much longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, so a couple more things I wanted to show you um, that I have in my home. And as I say, you can work with Bridget without anything. Like a brat bridge can be any scrap of cloth. Um, a Bridget's cross can be made with, um, you know, rushes or grasses that you pull from nearby where you live. Um, so I'm not, I don't want this video to be like a buy things to work with Bridget because you don't have to buy things to work with Bridget. And who am I to instruct anybody on how to work with Bridget? I'm just showing you what I've got basically. So 
this candle is um, like a Catholic devotional candle that I bought in a, a holy shop. It may have been called the holy shop. I can't remember. Um, but uh, it's, it's not really focusing terribly well on the picture. So there's a picture of St. Bridget. Oh, it's kind of blurry. The, the picture's <laughs> blurry, the picture itself. Um, and then there's a little prayer to St. Bridget. This is not a prayer that I pray, I have to say, because it's all about walking the path of Christian perfection. That's not really my um, my style of prayer. But um, so this is a little candle that I burn sometimes for Bridget. And I also have this little statuette of St. Bridget. Um, so she, you can see she's holding her cathedral at Kildare. And... Um, this, it's it's actually not that common to come across. I should be a bit dusty, <laughs> sorry. It's not that common to come across little statuettes of Bridget in those types of shops. Um, and I found this actually at Knock, which is um, a Marian apparition site in Ireland um, where Mary is supposed to have appeared. And um, there's a lot of Catholic gift shops in Knock. So I, I actually came across this statuette there and bought it because... It was so unusual to see and I was delighted to have a little image of St. Bridget to have in my home. And I also picked up there this little medal. Let's see if it'll focus on it. So it's got St. Patrick on one side and it has St. Bridget on the other side. And I'd never seen a medal with St. Bridget on it before. So I picked that up as well. Um, and finally, <coughs> my favourite piece is this statue of the goddess Bridget and I'm going to have to try to see how I can show it to you. So this statuette of um, the goddess Bridget um, I picked up just last year. I'd had my eye on it for ages if you're familiar with these. Um, these statues they're by Willow, um, sorry, they're by Willow Hall and they're quite expensive. Um, so this was something that I saved up for to get. So as you can see, um, we have a beautiful woman um, depicted as Bridget, um, and she's holding the, the eternal flame um, in her hands. And she's got her cauldron with the Bridget's cross on it and the flames burning underneath. So really given the idea and the flames behind her as well of the forge, and being a, a fire goddess. Um, but I like the touch of having this little pile of books as well, and which reminds me of Bridget the Healer. Um, no, not Bridget the Healer, Bridget the Poet, which is an aspect of Bridget that doesn't often get discussed. And we, we tend to more talk about Bridget of the forge and the fire and Bridget sometimes her healing, but the poet aspect um, of sort of inspiration and creativity and so on, um, we tend not to talk about as much. So I like that they've included the books there. So um, this lovely image of Bridget um, has sort of a pride of place in my house um, at the moment. So thank you for watching my little video on some of the things I have been doing to work with and get to know Bridget. Um, another part of my sort of relationship with Bridget has also involved learning Irish um, and uh that's that's maybe uh, that's a conversation for a whole other time a whole other set of um of resources and of course there are also a number of oracle decks that have images of bridget and um, sometimes i have taken those out of the deck to you know display in my home that kind of thing um but yes as i say i am no gatekeeper and i have no definitive story of how anyone should work with Bridget but these are just some of the things um, in my, that I have used and um, some of the books I find useful and interesting and uh, I thought I should put that one on top since it was my favourite <laughs> and uh, I hope you find it interesting if you work with Bridget at all I would be fascinated to hear what you use what your favourite books were if there's a book that you've read that I don't have here I would love to hear about it um because I'm always keen to, it's not even to learn more about Bridget, but just in reading about her, you get to sort of sink into thinking about her and reflecting on her. Um, so even when a book covers some of the same territory, it's nice to just have that for reflection and, and for thinking about. So I'll say goodbye, uh, Slán, and uh, August Gormayogat, thank you for watching um, my video today, and I'll see you back here again soon. Bye.